So this is the newest generation of the Starlink Ridgeline mount. And this one's compatible with their newest dish, the Starlink Gen 3 standard that I've got there. And in this video today, we're gonna to be doing an unboxing. I'm gonna walk you through the installation process as I install it on my roof. And I'm gonna be giving you my impressions and thoughts along the way. So hopefully this can give you all the information that you need if you're interested in purchasing this mount for your Gen 3 system. So a little bit of background first, what, what is the Ridgeline mount? What's, what's the big advantage with it? Well, first of all, this is great because you don't have to drill any holes in your roof. So if you watch the channel at all, you know that I do a ton of reviews on different mounting options, and those typically involve drilling into the roof directly or into the exterior wall or the fascia board of the roof, etc. With this Ridgeline mount, you can have a permanent installation without drilling any holes. It's actually held down by weights ballast weights that are right here and we'll get into all that I just wanted to kind of get that context out of the way and I apologize in advance for any wind noise it is a pretty windy day today but I've got nice weather perfect sunshine so I had to take advantage of it so let's get right into it so let's do the unboxing first typical Starlink pretty standard minimal packaging. You have the mount itself, which is all metal. Looks like you have some uh, hardware, some cable clips to be able to run the cable up your wall. And you can kind of see an example of that uh, right here. I've got a cable already installed from another mount review. I'm just going to be reusing that one. So I won't need these. We'll set those aside. You've got your adapter plate. So this is what actually slides on to the Gen 3 in place of the kickstand. So this will go away. This mounting plate will slide in its place. Uh, let's see, we've got the vertical mast section. So this is what gives you some clearance from the mount up to your adapter plate, gives it, you know, about what, nine, eight or nine inches of mast. Um, the Gen 3 antenna does not have motors or masts, so that's why they include this with the mounts now. And this also includes uh, this, this end that's kind of um, offset a little bit from the rest of the mount. That'll slide in here with the adjustment knob. That'll allow you to manually aim and rotate the, the antenna pretty easily because you have to do that with Gen 3. And then they include this nice little instruction seat, sheet. Uh, it's kind of telling you some information. Looks like you're gonna route the cable down through the down tube, all the way through the mount adapter plate, and then plug in the Starlink before you slide it actually into the Starlink. And then the rest of the installation is pretty simple. You just use this knob right here to loosen the two legs. They can adjust to virtually any pitch of roof, and you can even lay them 180 degrees for use on a flat roof. And then after you get that all adjusted, finally your ballast weights install into these little holders right here. So now to the actual mount itself. Looks like this thing comes out. Let's put that aside. Put that under here. So this is the mount itself. So let me loosen this and show you how that works. So you can see this one knob controls the rotation of the two legs and the center mounting post. So you adjust this, lay it flat on your roof, and then tighten everything down, and then put the weights in. That's pretty simple. Uh, let me just show you this real quick, because this is important as well. On the underside, you do have this rubber seal. So this is designed to protect your roof surface. If you have like a metal roof or a uh, clay tile roof or something. The only thing touching your roof surface is are these metal, um, I don't even know you would call them seals. They're just basically a protective surface that isolates the metal from your roof surface so you're not scratching anything up or damaging anything. This is actually basically the same design as the Generation 2 version. It looks like these seals are a little bit different. And then obviously this tube right here, this mounting tube, is different to accept the Gen 3 system. So that is the Ridgeline mount itself. Let me tighten this down. 
Next up, we have the ballast weights. So these will ship in a separate box. So my Ridgeline mount actually arrived a few days earlier than the weights. So if you get your Gen 3 Ridgeline mount and you're missing the weights, that's why they ship separately. They'll be a few days later. This is a very heavy box. I feel sorry for the FedEx guy. He's just hauling this around. This is like 60 or 70 pounds of weight. And you can see they're just, I wonder if they say, they don't say, but I think they're about 11 pounds each, 11 or 12 pounds each. So four of those go into the four little um, areas on the mount. And that's what weighs down the Ridgeline mount in order to provide a basically permanent installation of your Starlink dish without having to use drills or drilling holes into your roof. So the Ridgeline mount costs $250. You can get it directly from Starlink in the shop. That website is shop.starlink.com. Right now, I believe it's only available in the United States. That's where the, original, uh, the Gen 3 has been introduced and fully released. But you can check the website yourself to see if it's available in your market. So I think $250, that kind of scares a lot of people. Wow, that's a lot of money for a mounting solution. The equipment was 600, now you want me to pay $250 for this. Well, this is great for a few circumstances. First of all, if you're the person that just doesn't want to drill any holes in your roof, you don't want to worry about water leaks, that small $250 investment is pretty good insurance against any water damage in the future. Second reason is this allows you to do kind of a temporary slash permanent install. So you're installing it in a way that will remain in place and stable through storms and wind and weather and all that kind of stuff, but you're not actually permanently altering your structure in any way. So this is great if you're maybe renting a house or you only plan to have Starlink for a year or so while you're waiting on fiber or something like that where you don't want to make any permanent permanent changes to your house you can use something like this $250 to be able to uh, mount your Starlink in a very sturdy way without actually making modifications so now that we've got the unboxing out of the way and all that context let's go into the installation so the first thing I'm going to do is get my dish ready move this out of the way And you notice I got my cable nearby here as well, and that's because it wants you to plug in, uh, route the cable through the little mast section in the adapter plate before you actually plug it in. So we're gonna do that real quick. This, by the way, is the Gen 3 kickstand. This can go away because you don't need it anymore. Okay, so it wants me to take either end of the Gen 3 cable, because remember they're the same ends now, that it doesn't matter which way you go, and you're gonna route it through this little slot. And then up through, you're gonna take your mounting adapter plate. It's gonna come through here as well. And I believe it goes like this. Maybe, uh oh. There we go. This only fits in one way, as you see. So I don't see me struggling here. There we go. So it only snaps in one way. It's gotta be aligned the right way. There's plastic tabs inside here that this will click into. Do you, do you hear that? That means you're solid. A little bit of warning on this. Do not do this unless you're ready to actually install it because it's extremely hard to get this adapter plate back off of the mast. Okay, so that's very solid. That's not going anywhere. And now I can go ahead and plug in the cable to the dish and then slide in the mount. So it's got a little channel here for the cable. So just make sure you're, once you get ready to slide this in that you have the cable properly routed through the adapter plate. So we'll go ahead and plug in the cable, tab side up. And you just wanna make sure that that seal, that water seal right there is flush. Okay, if it is, you're all the way plugged in. Just double check it. You don't wanna be climbing back up on your roof if you don't need to. 
and then this adapter plate and the mast, this whole assembly, just slides right in place and you should hear it lock. There we go. So that's what it looks like. Your mounting adapter tube right here on the mount will be completely vertical, as will this thing right here. The adapter plate itself has a 20 degree angle to it. That's what Starlink recommends. So just some information there for you. And now this is ready to go. The dish is ready to go, the cable. I will go ahead and move on to the mount. So in my experience with the Gen 2 version of this, the easiest way to do this is to take the mount like this, lock it down, and then kind of carry it over your shoulder. So that way you can have both hands free to be able to climb the ladder. So that's what I'll do right now. So like I said, I've got my mount slung over my shoulder. This way I can safely climb the ladder with two hands. It's still kind of awkward. And then once you get up to your roof surface, it's best to just place the mount out of the way so you can safely transition. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it will slide by the way. Okay, there we go. Like I said, so place the mount so you can safely transition to your roof. Okay. So the ridge line mount, as the name implies, you're installing it on the ridge of your roof, which I'm gonna do right here on the, my detached garage. Again, sorry for the wind noise. So once you're up here, loosen this center uh, thumb screw right here. Expand the legs out. So you want each side to be laying completely flat against the surface. You want this part to be centered on the ridge. And then you also want the mounting tube to be completely vertical. Once that looks okay, and you're sure that you're flat, everything's pressed down, you can go ahead and tighten everything down. Give you a different view here. Doesn't have to be super tight, just enough. There's like some little, um, some little teeth in here on each side that actually grip this in place. So you've got the friction of obviously the screw, but then you also have those little teeth kind of locking it in position. So that looks good. Now I'm ready for the weights. By the way, if you have a roof like this, where there's no ridge vent, it's perfect, it's really easy. If you have a ridge vent, you're gonna have to kind of play around with it and see if you can get it installed at a good angle. Let me loosen it just to kind of demonstrate what I mean. So if you've got the ridge vent that's like three or four inches higher up than your roof surface, it might be something like this. It might look kind of awkward, uh, but it'll still work unless you've got like a really huge ridge vent. So just keep that in mind when you're ordering this if you have ridge vents. So let me get this back the way I had it. Okay, tighten down, ready to go. We're ready for the weights now. Let's do it. So the weights, the way I do it, um, I just carry basically one at a time up the ladder. I'm just grabbing them to get them over here. They're so heavy that I just, yeah, you just, just be safe on this. Just carry one at a time up your ladder. I like to place it on the roof, place them all four of them on the roof right next to my ladder and then climb up myself without the weights. So one, one hand on the ladder, one weight, and I'm just gonna place them on the roof, making sure that they're not gonna go ahead and slide. I'll go get the next one. Now that the weights are safely in place, I can climb up myself without having to worry about carrying the weights and transitioning to the roof at the same time. Okay, now I'll grab a couple at a time, walk up to my mount, 
Now the way these install, pretty easy. See this tab right here? Just line that up with this thing, drop it in place. Simple as that. And I actually think, see how this is beveled on one end? So this goes over here. Perfect. It's got a little space right here that you could actually, if you need to move this or disassemble it, you just press up to get those weights back out. So again, beveled in goes to the outside, drops in place. Last two weights. Beveled in to the outside. One more. Boom, there you go. Your mount is now installed. Now we just need to get the dish. And that is, like, this is probably 70 pounds, uh, maybe 70 pounds with a dish, but this is not going anywhere. I don't care how much wind you throw at it. Unless you're in a hurricane or a tornado, you shouldn't have to worry about this moving at all. I had the Gen 2 version installed on this roof for almost a year. And it worked great, it held up great. Zero complaints with that, how it held up with wind. It's really not a concern as a lot of people think it is. I had no issues. And this Gen 3 version, same design, same concept. So it's gonna perform pretty much the same way. Okay, now we're ready for cable in the dish. Let's carry it up. Oh, I should probably mention this. If you don't wanna do the cable first, that's totally fine. I know I put it in because that's the, what the instructions say to do, but you can actually do it as a last step if you'd like. So this, you can unplug this, keep it unplugged, because I know a lot of what a lot of you will do is route the cable first, go in from the inside to the outside, you'll route it up the wall, and then leave it there until you install your dish. You can do that as well. Just make sure you assemble this, and then when you get up there, you'll do the same thing. You'll just put the cable through this slot, up through, and then plug it in. You'll just be doing it up on the roof instead of down here on the ground like I am. That's totally up to you. In the previous version, Starlink included a carrying bag for your dish. Uh, we do not have that for the Gen 3 version. So you're on your own as far as carrying it up the ladder. That carrying bag was kind of nice because it allowed you to sling it over your shoulder and not worry about trying to hold the dish with one hand and climbing with the other. So, okay, now we're up on our roof. Set the cable aside for now. This thumb screw right here This is what locks your dish into place. So you wanna loosen that a little bit before you insert the mast into the mount. But then when you're ready, try to get a good angle. When you're ready, it goes in like that. Make sure your cable's not binding on anything. And as you can see, now we're rotating. We have the ability now to rotate and aim the dish in this configuration. So don't tighten it down quite yet. You need to do the manual dish alignment for Gen 3 before you can tighten everything down. So throw your cable down there, route it inside, plug it in, and then come back up. I'm gonna go do that real quick and I'll meet with you when I'm ready to do the manual alignment. Okay, so now we're ready for the alignment. I've got everything powered up, plugged in, ready to go. I allowed about 10 minutes or so for it to boot up. So I'm gonna take out my phone, I'm gonna open up the Sterlink app, and my screen says offline because I don't actually have a subscription for this dish because it's just my test unit. That's fine. You can ignore that. Your screen will look different. Uh, but scroll down and you either have a message that says uh, Starlink misaligned or you can go down into the menu here and click on alignment. 
Once you do that, you're going to have this screen where it says turn Starlink to match the target, the target being the little gray box here. So you come over to your dish, try to get this in frame for both actions here, but I have turning the dish and you can see that it's tur now turning as well on the screen representation. So I'm turning it until it's perfectly aligned and there you go. You hit, uh, go ahead and tighten down your adjustment screw on your mount. That will lock it in place. There we go, and we're still good. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You just have to have it say that it's aligned and then click done, and you're good to go. Okay, so now the installation of the Starlink Gen 3 Ridgeline mount is complete. You can see I've got the weight ballast installed. Everything's connected up and running right now. I've done the alignment already. Super easy, super simple, uh, pretty straightforward install. What are my thoughts and impressions on this unit? Well, it's basically the same design and concept as the Gen 2 version, which was extremely popular, and I loved that one. It worked well for me for about a year, like I said before. This one is really no different as far as how user-friendly it is. I like that you can put this just about on any roof and not have to drill holes or worry about water leaks. They improved the rubber, uh, the rubber pads on the bottom of the mount surface. I think that those are improved over the Gen 2 version, which seemed to come off a little bit easier. Other than that, I think it's pretty much the same mount. This Gen 3 manual alignment system continues to be pretty easy to use. A lot of people uh, complained about having to manually align the Gen 3 Starlink, but I don't think it's a big deal at all. You saw in the video, super easy process, took me about 30 seconds or so. Um, overall, $250, a lot to pay for a mount, I understand that, but for what you get, you get a high quality mount that you can permanently install without actually making any modifications to your structure. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd appreciate your feedback on this video. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you do so. Make sure to also head over to our blog, sterlinghardware.com, and subscribe to our newsletter there. We do have some different content between what's on the blog and what's on the YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribed to both places. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.